Welcome, everyone, to another edition of To Your Health, a program designed to bring you information on healthy living, featuring those who make a healthy living lifestyle possible. I'm your host, Fred Zucker, coming to you from the campus of Parker University in Dallas, Texas. And our special guest today is Dr. William Morgan, the president of Parker University. Welcome, Dr. Morgan. Thank you, Fred. Glad you could be with us. Dr. Morgan, you've been in office now for about six months at Parker. During that time, if I may, just sort of review what you've been doing, just passing your time. You've been plenty busy. You were immediately faced with the transition of your leadership, building your team. And then you're involved in planning the Sapphire Celebration on the Parker University campus for our seminar here in Dallas. That was a great event. And then uh, taking care of daily business and also planning for that premier event that's taking place in Las Vegas, the Parker Seminar in Las Vegas. Now, on top of all that, we learned about a decision that was handed down in October in a lawsuit brought by the Texas Medical Association against the Texas Board of Chiropractic Examiners. And we found that that judgment was not in our favor. And then in November, we became heavily involved in the Sunset Commission review of the Chiropractic Act that's going to be taking place during the 2017 session of the Texas legislature. So uh, what have you been doing in your spare time? (laughs) Moving my family from Washington, D.C. That was a big task, too, Mm -hmm. right there. Well, can you give us an overview of what's at stake here in in these things that are happening in Texas right now? Well, I've been talking to national leaders, and in their view, this is the biggest threat to chiropractic we've ever faced. Well, Texas takes the lead, and if what happens in Texas goes far beyond our borders. This is bigger than the Wilk antitrust suit. This is foundational. This is something that we cannot afford to lose. There's, um, you know, we'll talk about this with this interview, but it's, it's, if we lose the right to diagnose, that means all of our patients need to make that extra stop in a physician's office. Right. And we're at their leisure for how many visits we get, what, who comes to us. Can you imagine that? Not having the, them able to come t- come to you. No. If you remember 30 years ago or 40 years ago, if you had a wart, you go to the doctor's office. The doctor would look at it, got a wart. I'm going to burn it off. Mm-hmm. 30 bucks. Today, if you went to a physician's office, they'd say, you got a wart. We're going to refer you to a specialist, a dermatologist. Right. Mm-hmm. The dermatologist would see you. You've got a wart. We'll schedule a procedure. You come in another day. Right. You get the procedure done. Now we're going to follow you, schedule you for a follow-up. Follow-up. $1,000, $1,500, four days off work later, you got your wart removed. Right. The system is flawed, and it's wrought with, play, with or fraught, rather, with um, you know redundancies and, and loss right. efficiencies. I come from the military background for, for chiropractic. In the military, they want us to speak to practice at the top of our training, at the top of our game, at the top of our scope. Right. It, it breeds um, efficiencies and saves the government money. Losing diagnosis, best case scenario, the government loses millions. Worst right. scenario, chiropractic is, is, is out in the state of Texas. Right. And if it happens here, it will roll on to another um, you know, in another state and another Absolutely. state. There, in uh, 2006, there was an a agency put together, not an agency, but a, a organization put together, um, SOPP, let me see if I remember what the name stands for, the Scope of Practice Scope Partners. Scope of Practice Partners. Yep. And yeah. their, their goal is to limit the scope of non-medical doctors and non-osteopathic physicians. That's their goal in every state. And what they do is they look they look around to see Where's a likely candidate for victory? Where's the best value for their money? Th- right. Their money to put us people limit their scope so they empower the the medical doctors to be the leaders of of all healthcare. Yeah, so, and now Texas is in the crosshairs. We're so in the crosshairs. Yeah, and as Texas goes, it's the second largest state in 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 size and in population. Right, exactly. Well, we have spoken with you before on this program about your experience and your background and. I think it's a, it's a wonderful coincidence that you have come to Parker University at this crucial time for the profession. Just review for us briefly your background and experience and how that lends itself so well to what we're doing here well, now. I've been a practicing chiropractor for 30 years, but for 18 years of that, I was working at Walter Reed and, and National Military Medical Center Bethesda, taking care of the head of our military, the leaders of the Pentagon. Right. Also, for, la- for 16 years, I was the chiropractor to Congress, I think for two days a week. Wow. I took care of 
Congress with dozens of presidential candidates as patients. And over the years, it, it talked to people about leadership and how laws are made and how lobbying takes place. And right. it's pretty much, I got my doctorate in my doctorate, Your doctorate in understanding politics, lobbying, and decision making in Washington, and, and then also becoming the uh, White House chiropractor, talked me to another level. But I've I've right. spoken to hundreds of our leaders and have learned over the years how things are done, why things are done, and how money influences you know decision making in Washington Absolutely. and in our case Austin. Yes. And of course, we're going through this process right now with a new se- legislative session underway, uh, the 2017 session. But we had a meeting here on campus just recently of many of the leaders in the profession, both in Texas and out, so the national mm-hmm. leadership. Tell us a little bit about that meeting. Uh, we had leaders from the ACC, the A, I don't want to leave anybody out, the ACA, American Chiropractic Association, the Texas Board of, of Chiropractic, Chiropractic Examiners, Examiners. Uh-huh. who also, we had, we had a, a national board rep there as well our our chairman of the, of the trustees dr bud smith right we had let's see who else we had dr foster doc, dr stephen foster from the texas chiropractic um college right we had dr ashley cleveland who leads our um parker college of chiropractic right and uh, you were there of course we had uh, someone from the foundation for chiropractic progress yeah, dr flynn was there so mm-hmm. we were we were represented well and we also had in, in cmic represented doc, dr wayne wilson was on um a, a, through a telephone connection correct we had the heavy hitters in in chiropractic all together it was that important they, on they short, made it to dallas they for made the it meeting on short notice right and it was serious business they understood the gravity of what we're facing and definitely the thing i really want to to communicate to our listeners is this is a big deal and there's people on the sidelines not getting in the battle we need bodies we need chiropractors chiropractic assistants and our patients to come, you know, to come to this. Our ancestors right. in Texas, when when we were fighting for independence, mo- not most of the people didn't show up to fight, but those who did, those who did, had left a legacy that we 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 treasure and we honor to this very day. And there'll be people who don't show up to fight, but they won't be they won't be held in honor for the generations to come. That's right. Well, there's a meeting coming up in Austin, as a matter of fact, that is sort of something we've been pointing to for a while under the direction of the Texas Chiropractic Association, working Mm -hmm. with you and Dr. Foster Mm -hmm. and many others. The Texas Chiropractic Legislative Leadership Conference is coming up in Austin. Mm -hmm. How about that? What's what's at stake there? It's what we need to do. We need to show those legislators that we're serious. We have four buses. We have over 200 chiropractic students coming from Parker. We're going to descend on... um, Austin, but we need doctors, we need patients, we need to show that this is important to us right. and really help them understand what's at stake. And one Absolutely. of the things I really need, we need to get a, across in a public way is the education that our chiropractors have. Back in the, the 40s and, thir- and, and, and 50s, we were called up on like, chiropractors don't have the education to diagnose. So they sat back, the med- there are our adversaries thinking we would not respond to that accusation but we did we upped the game right we now it now takes a minimum of seven years of higher education to become a chiropractor seven years right. and many is eight or nine years i've been i've been on faculty of a medical school and chiropractic colleges the textbooks for most topics are the same the same i've i've supervised medical doctors medical students uh, interns and chiropractic me- um, residents and interns and students, I will say when it comes to neuromusculoskeletal diagnosis, the chiropractic student is superior. And I've I heard can, that time and time uh, again. I, I have seen it, and I would say that my, the medical doctors in our department at Walter Reed would, would echo that. Now, internal medicine-wise, we'll give that to the medical doctors. That's, sure. That's their thing. And, and the use of, of drugs, that's not our thing. We don't use drugs. We're a drug-free um, profession. Right. We provide the alternative to these dangerous drugs. We Right now, we have an opiate epidemic. That's right. If you start with chiropractic, you may never get to the stage where you need opiates. Absolutely. And we should be working together, oh, not at goodness. odds with each other. Yeah, it's for yeah. the patient. You've got that right. I'm, I am not against working with medical doctors. I'm against having our scope limited and money funded, funneled through somebody else's office right. for this for the sake of control. 
Now, the, the medical lobby would also say they're in favor of integration as well. Physician-led integration, physician-controlled integration. Right, right. That's not, that's not what we want. It's not the same thing. Well, what should our viewers and our listeners do to help us win this fight? There are certain things oh, that I think goodness. would be perfectly positioned to make an, an effect on this For thing. such a time as this, you were called. The people who are hearing my voice today, you're hearing this for a reason. This is, this is your call to, bat, your, to, to, to be counted on our side. Right. We need people to join the Texas Chiropractic Association. We need donations to the Texas Chiropractic Association. Definitely. They, they are carrying the load right now. They're the ones we're relying on to, do, to, to win this battle. Right. We're supporting them. We're, we also need chiropractors to, to be able to contact their, their members of the House and the Senate and the, and the State House. Right. But also, we need you to show up on February 9th, 2017, as we march on Austin. Right. That's the legislative day. That is it. That's not, that, the battle doesn't end that day. No. And that's our that's what we have coming up in the in the near f- future. But the battle will go on. Stay tuned because we're going to have other things that we want need to communicate. But I've had one very strong leader in in the profession tell me you really need about three million dollars to win this this battle. He said if you had three three thousand chiropractors in Texas made a donation of one thousand dollars, you would have it. At yep. that point, you're not p- playing defensive ball. We're, we fund that we fund the battle in, in Austin and our legal battle, and actually we can move this we can move the needle to to the right. We can actually yeah. increase our, our market share, and we really do need to educate folks that we have seven years minimum of, it, of education. We are trained in diagnosis, and that you know we are we we have always whenever we've been challenged on. Our educational standards, we, we look at what, what they're saying. If there's validity in it, we up our standards. That's right. We respond. Parker University produces awesome chiropractors. They're trained to diagnose. I put my stamp on them. I put my name on every one of those diplomas proudly. Right. You talk about being master clinicians, and I know that's your background, which you mm-hmm. want our students to aspire to as well. There's also going to be a conference call, a teleconference coming up next Friday. That's right. At noon. And the number is 1-888-805-8897. That's the, the phone number to call in. The conference ID is 625-73190. Dr. Morgan, these are challenging times for the profession. As I said earlier, it's just uh, our benefit, our fortuitousness that we have you at the, at the con during this, uh, during this uh, challenging time for the profession. We're glad that you're here and glad you could be with us on the program today. Well, thank, thank you. you very much, Fred. Yes, sir. Tune in again for more To Your Health. Come back and see us again. Thanks. Bye-bye. <laughs>